On today's episode of Locked On NFL, recapping the Packers' blowout of the Lions on Monday Night Football, Aaron Rodgers returns to Lambeau, Aaron Jones finds pay dirt four different times, and where do the Lions go from here? We also have the Tuesday Fantasy Forum here on the Locked On NFL podcast, free on all platforms. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, it is Tuesday here on Locked On NFL. That means you get Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL, host of Locked On Vikings, and myself, Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter here for another episode of Locked On NFL. Today is also the official relaunch of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast featuring Eric Crocker and Ryan Tracy. Make sure you go and check them out to get all the information you need about rookies performing right now and, of course, upcoming rookies as they look at draft classes upcoming and college performances as well going to be a fantastic show this is also going to be a fantastic show because we were treated to a nice nfc north matchup the green bay packers and the detroit lions going up against one another for monday night football Aaron Jones, the big story here, had a phenomenal night. Four tutties in this one. Became the first player to score four touchdowns on Monday Night Football since Marshall Falk, of all people. Uh, Absolutely love this performance by uh, Aaron Jones and the Green Bay Packers. How'd you feel about this game? Because I know that you're closely tied to it, as are the uh, Minnesota Vikings, of course. (laughs) Yeah, well, this is our yearly tradition. We always get treated to once a year, Monday Night Football, the ritual sacrifice of the Lions to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it's just a thing that we always get. Uh, and this was this year they had it in week two. It's right. I didn't know that Marshall Falk said that's really fun. I know. Um, yeah, it's I know, a really I mean, not bad company for Aaron Jones, right? Yeah, I, this one went exactly how you thought it was going to go, right? Like, I yeah. think even the spread was pretty much down to one score on the over under and on the, the actual spread. Like, it was. Uh, exactly what we thought the game would be um the lions always play pretty tough in this game and they held mm-hmm. on up until the halftime um they they went into halftime with the lead even i think and mm-hmm. then everything fell apart in the second half as aaron Rodgers figured out what he could and couldn't get away with and then suddenly he could just score at will um the, the rain started coming down and jared goff and his hilariously tiny hands started to struggle with that a a uh botched snap a Mm-hmm. stupid you know winding back to throw and the ball slips out of his hands another really dumb interception jared goff kind of <laughs> showing the worst of himself um and throwing away this game that the way the lions played in the trenches they might have had a chance at if they didn't look like the moment was too big for him yeah absolutely and that, it certainly got to that point where it felt like the moment was too big for the detroit lions the thing that I loved for the Green Bay Packers here is that they come out of that 38-3 to loss to the New Orleans Saints to open up the season. They didn't change anything about what it is that they do. They maintain their identity. Matt LaFleur, great leadership. Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers, great leadership in that aspect coming in. And look, the Detroit Lions said, all right, we're going to play these these cover two, these two high safety shells, and we're going to dare you to run the ball. And the Green Bay Packers kind of said, I, I'll definitely take that. No problem at all. <laughs> Handing the ball off to Aaron Jones, throwing the ball to him in the short and intermediate area, kind of using those short passes as an extension of the run game, as Eli Manning astutely pointed out, a very popular portion of what you can do with these dynamic running backs. And, you know, you got out of this game with, uh, you know, when it came to um Aaron Jones 17 carries for 67 yards and a touchdown on the ground and then he had three receiving touchdowns in this one targeted six times six catches 48 yards I mean the guy was just all over the place oh and of course Devontae Adams had 121 receiving yards as well so it was just a tough day at the office for the Detroit Lions and Jared Goff yeah, uh, maybe they won't have a tough day at the office one of these days at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay, so obviously I'm like super familiar with these two teams, and I watch right. this game every year, and every year, right. well, Vikings fans and Bears fans, we get together and we say, maybe this is the time. Every year for the last de- two and a half decades, we come together and we say, maybe this is the time the Lions can maybe sneak one out at Lambeau. They've won one time in Lambeau, I think, since like the, Gulf War, the first Gulf War ended. So <laughs> it just never happens. But I, I'm so disappointed 
in Dan Campbell's team, the way that Dan Campbell runs his team, because down the stretch, I just didn't see a lot of finish from the Lions. Mm -hmm. And the kind of tough, macho, gritty, kneecap-biting deal that... That I mean, Dan Campbell seems like he wants to build this tough culture, this culture of, you know, guys that are OK with taking a hit on the mouth, guys that are resilient and tough and able to kind of withstand uh, adversity. And I did not see that in this team. Um, yeah. And I don't think there's a reason to panic for Lions fans. Most of the people playing in this game are not going to be playing on the Lions by the time the Lions intend to be competitive. Um, right. But I don't know. Lions fans, I think, just deserve better than being treated to that. And I think it was it was really easy to see the Jared Goff experiment not exactly being successful. Um, you know, looking at what Jared Goff had with the Rams going into what he has with the Lions now, it was pretty easy to see. And I think everybody but the Lions themselves, including Lions fans, could see this was not going to be the formula. And like, lo and behold, they pr probably played about two and a half quarters of quality football and then just seemed like they kind of ran out of steam. Yeah. And this is something we've seen with a Jared Goff offense before uh, i think yeah. you're right they actually were playing well in the trenches but uh, when you have this sort of we'll, we'll talk about it more a little bit here in just a moment but I, I have a lot of concerns around jared goff and because of that i have a lot of concerns about the detroit lions and for the detroit lions over these next couple of seasons absolutely if you have any concerns about your car you probably should get that taken care of. You can't let a cheat problem turn into an expensive problem. And maybe you're a little bit worried about how much the cheat problem costs. Car things can be expensive. If you're looking to save a buck, perhaps, rockauto.com is the place to go. You can get whatever car parts you possibly need at Rock Auto. You can even do the thing where you go to a mechanic, they tell you what you're going to need, and you say, can I bring in my own version of the part? And you just do the labor. Most mechanics, you'd be able to negotiate that. You can go get the part for way cheaper than what the mechanic was going to charge you at rockauto.com. They have this awesome catalog, really expansive of every part, car part you could imagine, and some like basic supplies, like jumper cables and stuff that you just need in your car. Um, and they let you buy that directly from the manufacturer. So nobody's upcharging you. There's no middlemen, nothing like that. You can just get the exact same parts from the same assembly line, but you're getting them for cheaper just because of what's on the package. So head on over to rockauto.com. At checkout, there is a how you heard about us section. And there, let them know that Locked On sent you. That is at rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. I also want to talk to you about how you watch TV. It can get a little complicated with all these different devices. And, you know, you got to you, this logins on your laptop and, and this you got a smart TV logged into and you got something else on your phone and you're watching highlights. There's a lot of different ways to watch TV and you have to remember all these passwords and stuff. But Direct TV Stream is your solution to this problem. It consolidates everything. One login. You never need to get another device ever again. And the coolest part, no annual contract that is direct tv stream and you can learn more at directtv.com that is directtv.com all right listen luke um you're gonna love hearing me say this but i'm very concerned for the detroit lions and the near future for them um i mean yeah they're locked yeah you know they're locked into this jared goff contract for this year and probably next year they probably don't intend to be competitive during that time like you mentioned earlier, a lot of the players that are on this team might not be on this team by the time that they do get competitive. But I just kind of want to go over a couple of things. You look at the overall statistics for this game. We don't like to be like box score scouters and things like that, but just bear with me for a moment. You have both of these teams that went 100% in the red zone, 100% in goal to go situations. Uh, one of them converted four third downs. One of them converted five. 344 total yards, 323. 108 yards on the ground to 96. 300, or 236 passing yards to 227 passing yards. Actually, the Lions better in yardage throughout this game. This was a very evenly split game in terms of the production that you saw on the field. So the stats mm -hmm. might not tell you enough, but what you can learn from that is that they essentially move the ball at similar pace. However, this was an absolute blowout, 35 to 14 in favor of the Green Bay Packers. The big difference, a lost fumble and an interception on what I think you can kind of call a little bit of a YOLO ball. 
And trust me, I've seen some YOLO balls recently. <laughs> that, <laughs> a little bit of a YOLO ball. Okay. Pierre Goff <laughs> scrambling out in the middle of a tackle. He just heaves it to the moon and it lands directly into a Packers lap. Not even close. No, no lions anywhere in the area. Looks like the ball might have slipped out of his hand because of the rain, yeah. but it was a very inex. I mean, you go back to the sideline after that one and you get reamed for it. And yeah. deserve that's, so. that's one of those old. Remember, the you used to be the red phone that you would see people get on <laughs> on the sideline. Yeah. Like that's one of those red phone moments. The thing yeah. about this for me is that Jared Goff has continuously been this player, whether it's in Sean McVay's system or it's in this, you know, Anthony Lynn, Dan Campbell offense. He Attempts has always, to recreate Sean McVay's system. Yeah, right, right. He has consistently been that player to where once he falls behind, you mentioned them playing about two and a half good quarters of football, and then they fell behind. Jared Goff doesn't lead fourth quarter comebacks. He doesn't lead comebacks in games. He's generally one of those guys that goes down for the count the minute that you have a multiple score deficit there. That stares him in the face. The idea around sitting with Jared Goff over the next couple of years and then going with all of these culture coaches like Dan Campbell, Anthony Lynn, Aaron Glenn, they have created sort of this top-down structure that creates culture and cultivates culture within that locker room. But it's going to be hard to do that when you're combating yourself with the quarterback play that's going to be put on the field. That's where my main concern is. And that's why it goes beyond just Jared Goff years for me. The lasting effect of this not being a winning franchise immediately, to me, combats what it is that they want to create in terms of a winning culture with this organization. Am I wrong to be concerned about that? Am I overreacting? Or does that make sense in terms of what this team is now going to have to combat because of the product that they're stuck putting out on the field? I, I think, I mean, this long-term angle is fine, sure. If you don't think the next two years are going to be any good and you just want to limp through with Jared Goff, eat the contract for the Rams and get the draft picks out of it for your rebuild, that's kind of the justification, right, for, for all mm -hmm. of this stuff. If you think Jared Goff, but here's the deal. Brad Holmes thinks Jared Goff is good. I, he's <sighs> just, it's just his guy, you know? We just, God, everybody has hashtag their guy. Um, and I think it's not going to work. And the thing about a long-term plan is you have to survive until that plan starts producing results. And if you have a long term plan that isn't supposed to produce results until year three, you're going into the first year that you're even supposed to try to compete, probably on the hot seat. And that right. is a really difficult way to do this in the NFL. If you want to plan long term, you also have to find a way to be at least respectable enough short term to keep your job. Otherwise, everybody, somebody else is going to come in and inherit all those draft picks you tanked for. And they're going to have a totally different plan with all of that stuff. And it's going to clash with what you did and stuff. And we saw, you know, the Browns were in that hell for like yeah. three decades before, yep. um, <clears throat> before they started drafting a little better. Stefanski's got them turned around and stuff. They're, they're doing mm -hmm. well, but that's, you know, the, the kind of Browns hell. But I also want to talk a little bit about the Packers because mm -hmm. I, am I just a Vikings homer or should we be a little concerned? Because that game, that week one game was terrible. Mm -hmm. And then even though, you know, like all of those stats you cited, I was kind of starting to think like, you know, 17 to 35 is a good final score and you got the turnovers mm -hmm. and they played more sound football. But boy, that looked really bad to start. Like, is it yeah. weird that they came out of the first half struggling that hard against the lowly Lions that many argue are not even trying to win? Yeah, it's interesting watching the Packers have to get into rhythm. And perhaps they just they get there and then once they're there, they're there. And I apologize. I think I said 35 to 14 for the final score. 35 to 17 is the correct score. But when it comes down to it, one of the things I, I think that there is reason for concern if they can't hit that rhythm on the offensive side. But I'll tell you, even if they hit the rhythm on the offensive side, where I'm kind of concerned about is the pass rush for the Green Bay Packers. It was so no bad. sex. No, it's yeah, it's a good no Lions line. It's one. like the best part of their team. But whoa, like you got to yeah. put up something better. You can't fall that far just for not having Zadaria Smith in the game. Absolutely, absolutely not. And in that last, in the you know, in their Week One matchup, they did have Zadaria Smith in the game, and they also had Preston Smith. Right, the Smith brothers that aren't actually brothers were out there. Yeah. They're supposed to be your your big time pass rushing guys that get pressure on the quarterback. We're not seeing the Green Bay Packers right now generate pressure on the defensive side. That's going to cause them issues later on when they're playing against better teams and better quarterbacks. And they have some of those on the schedule still to come. I mean, those yeah. are all present. So that's where I might be a little bit concerned about Green Bay is what does this defense look like for them as they continue going on? I think the offense will hit a stride, but 
are they going to be in a situation where they're going to be like the Atlanta Falcons to where they're going to have to produce big time on the offensive side just to hope to keep up with what the defense is going to give up? Yeah, and look, I, as a Vikings fan, I have seen something. This this looks familiar in a very concerning way to me because last year the Vikings lose Daniil Hunter and their pass rush fell apart. They had mm-hmm. nobody else. You know, they had a couple of players who had been starters before who, you know, the team swore by, but they had absolutely no way to get to quarterbacks. and Their defense got shredded. They had a bunch of problems on the back end, too. And when your pass rush is that reliant on one player and then that player is having health issues, it's like uh, Packers fans. We know this song yeah. and I, I get a little worried if you're with me. And you're a little concerned about the Packers. Maybe you want to short them in the betting market. Look no further than betonline.ag. BetOnline is your one-stop shop for all things news, odds, and props. All pro and college football and other sports as well. Basketball, football, Vegas, casino games, whatever you like. And right now, you can enter promo code. Uh, If you don't have an account, go sign up at betonline.ag on your mobile or your desktop. That's free to do. And then when you make your first deposit for money to actually bet, You can enter promo code NFL100, NFL100, get a 100% welcome bonus. So they will just match your deposit. They double it for you. You put in 50 bucks, now you have 100. Congratulations. That is at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. All right, everybody, it is Tuesday, and that means it's time for the Tuesday Fantasy Forum here on Locked On NFL. Joining us this week is Marcus Mosher at Marcus underscore Mosher, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and of course, one of the hosts over at Locked On Dynasty Football. You can follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Marcus, we appreciate you coming through, buddy. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Now, my fantasy teams are not doing as well, Ross, but uh, I know you didn't really ask that. <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's always we're always checking in on each other without checking in on each other. You know what I mean? So I hear you. <laughs> Let, let me ask you, were you subject to any of the big performances from this week? Any of the big standouts this week? Well, I mean, I had Derrick Henry in a league and he scored like 50 points and I still lost. So it just kind of shows you how the day was going. <laughs> oh, right? good. Uh, I mean, I, listen, I think that's the biggest story of the week is Derrick Henry just continues to eat. In his last 16 games, he's over 2,100 yards and 17 touchdowns. I mean, he's just an animal. And we knew that. Yep. And here's the, here's the scary thing. If you are a non Derrick Henry fantasy owner. He typically doesn't do this until November and December. So for him to already start racking off some of these big games and piling up numbers, uh, it's only going to be good things for his fantasy future. Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in uh, a league with a lot of other Vikings people. Um, And boy, well, that so Vikings players come at a premium premium in that league, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, I didn't get any of them, and I regret it because they keep scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Thielen, 17 yeah. touchdowns in his last 17 games. And it, it, the thing is, we knew he was going to be a value this year in fantasy drafts because he's he's Kirk Cousins' favorite guy in the red zone. Uh, I really don't everybody see thought he'd reason. be old and washed, but yeah, he's still doing I, I really it. don't see why he can't be a really high end wide receiver two, low end wide receiver one the rest of the season. Yeah. So I so here's the thing. I need help. Because I'm terrible at this game. And I lost to Ross to, uh, this week in our <laughs> Dynasty League. Ross got the better of me. That's embarrassing. Uh, yep, go ahead. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mainly, as he was texting me, I've given up on fantasy and I don't, like, this is just not my year. As yeah, he's beating yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like what the Jaguars tweeted at the car, yes, at the, the right, crowd, right? <laughs> long season guys just in there. <laughs> so okay so huge reason that I lost is because I put in I think uh, Corey Davis who got like nothing and mm-hmm. kept Marvin Jones on the bench and I'm having all kinds of trouble with start sits just in general it, w- do you have any general tips for just how to approach those tougher decisions those hard start sit type decisions yeah, so there's two schools of thought. You can be really analytical and you can look at like the betting lines and you can see what the point total is in these games. And like we had a feeling the Jacksonville game might have more points than what this Jets game had because the Jets are going up against the Patriots defense. But at the end of the day, Luke, it's it's just a gut call, right? Like, do I really think Corey Davis is going to be able to get a lot of points against Bill Belichick in that New England defense? Probably not. Is there going to be an opportunity for a lot of garbage time for Marvin Jones in Jacksonville? Probably. So, listen, I, I don't hate your choice. I, I completely understand why. Corey Davis looked really good in week one. This is fantasy football. This is why we love it. This is why we hate it. Uh, you're going to make the wrong decisions every now and again. Just don't sweat it. Just keep it. I never thought about the, the, the over-under thing. That's a good, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah, it's actually a really good one. That. 
Yeah, I like that a lot. Hey, Marcus, a quick question for you. What do you do right now with San Francisco's backfield? <laughs> or what's uh, up? <laughs> yeah, that mess. I don't, Kyle Shanahan would like to know that question as well. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah for sure. Banged up. But I do actually think Elijah Mitchell is very encouraging from what we saw in week two. Now, I know he left with a shoulder injury, and I know if you started him this week, you probably were disappointed. Only like 50 total yards. But I think what was really encouraging is he had 20 touches in this game. For Kyle Shanahan to give one singular mm. running back 20 touches typically means he thinks pretty highly of them. So you might be without Elijah Mitchell for a couple of weeks. We shall see. But I do think that's the guy that ultimately the 49ers are going to roll with for the rest of the season. Uh, so if you have him, hold on to him. If you don't have him, this might be a really good buy low opportunity because I think by the middle part of the season, he's going to be the go-to guy there. That's a really, really good idea. Hey, speaking of uh, folks, to go ahead and add to your team waiver wire, do you have any must pursues on the waiver this week? This one sounds really gross, but what about Cordero Patterson for the Atlanta oh, let's Falcons? go. Let's go. <laughs> Listen, I know Luke is a fan. I'm a fan. If you drafted him in Dynasty Forever way back in 2013 in the first round, you're finally getting the return on the investment that you were hoping for. <laughs> uh, 23 PPR points this week. The Falcons seem pretty set on using him like a running back. And that game script wasn't even all that great for Patterson, but he has RB eligibility in most leagues. You can certainly do a lot worse for an RB too. Go pick up Cordero Patterson, uh, available in like 90% of ESPN leagues right now. Love that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I'm always here for Cordero Patterson, best kick returner in the, the history of the league. Yes, not not even a question. Now, I know people are going to come back. In the history of the Bears, yep. <laughs> but listen, Cordero Patterson is the best kick returner in the league. That doesn't mean overall returner. But best right. Yeah, no, Hester returner. did putts. Hester did right. putts. Yeah, he Hester's was a good a kick yes. returner, but, he, but Hester did putts. That's always the fun thing. I, I like to troll Lauren with that, of Locked yes. on Bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not fair that they get two of the best returners in NFL history. I mean, they, hey, right. they have to have something. Them, right? Yeah, they get they have to have something right. They can't have a quarterback. So here you go. Here's two good returners. <laughs> Just a bunch of NFC boys making fun of the Bears, and Lauren's <laughs> not even here to defend his boys. Listen, they just until they get to they had they had, they won a game where they had 83 passing yards. They're okay. They'll be fine. I mean, who could lose to the Bengals? Okay. Yikes! <laughs> it's just that so many shots. I love it. I love no, that it. was a shot right back at. That's okay. It, <laughs> Jake knows. <laughs> All right, Marcus, that's we've eaten up enough of your time. So you can find Marcus at the Locked on Dynasty football podcast and at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. Marcus, thank you so much. Thank you, Luke. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, bud. Tomorrow on the show, Tony Wiggins and James Rapine are coming on to talk a little bit about our NFL power rankings, our Locked On Podcast Network power rankings. We're doing it every week, and they're talking about it every Wednesday, so make sure you check that out. Also, check out the Locked On Bets podcast. Those guys are 62.6% over the first two weeks of the season. They are on absolute fire. You do not want to miss on that gambling advice. So head on over to the Locked On Bets podcast. Check out the Locked On NFL Draft podcast and come on back tomorrow and check us out on the Locked On NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.